Greetings, beautiful bipeds of Earth. It is I, Christina, here at Fit and Bendy. And I am here to talk about your butt. Everybody loves butts, but they are for more than just decoration and sitting on. They are also for improving our hip flexibility. Because what happens over time when we sit a lot, as I'm sitting right now, as you can see, my hip flexors get kind of short and tight and my butt just gets squashed. And so what we're going to work on today is a very common exercise, the clam, but we're going to really break it down to make sure that we're doing it in a super targeted way to get to some of those butt muscles that we don't always access. So if you will lie down with me on your right side, we're going to get to work. So big part of clams is making sure that your setup is right. So when I first lay down, uh, just relax like I'm at the beach, right? This hip kind of hikes up because my waist is smaller than my hips. So what I want to think about doing is lengthening this top butt bone out that direction. And I use my waist muscles to do that. So my waist muscles are now engaged and working to hold my pelvis so that my hip bones are vertical. Then I'm going to take this hip bone, I'm going to move it a little bit in front of the bottom hip bone. So it's almost like I'm about to roll into my belly. And I'm going to take this top thigh bone and lengthen it out. So now this knee is past that knee. And as I do that, I like to just kind of like pat my hips right here and just get them to like soften a little bit, right? And I want to make sure that these muscles are not engaged. They're soft, they're juicy, they're not doing anything. They're super chill. We're going to try to keep it that way. So we're isolating the butt muscles. So go ahead and then take your hand and poke around and feel your butt muscles. Now you've got the big gluteus maximus on top. Everyone knows that one. We're trying to get the muscles underneath it. And those muscles are going to work to lift that knee up and lower it back down. Now, notice how tiny and unimpressive this movement is. Tiny and unimpressive is definitely where you want to be. If we start to make this movement bigger, where the knee opens up further, then what we're doing is we're bringing other muscles into play, our back, our waist, our hip flexors. We want our hip flexors relaxed and our back and our waist is, is not moving. It's still and that's going to really force those deep butt muscles, the ones underneath the gluteus maximus, to do this work. There are actually six of them, and their entire job is just to externally rotate your leg and hold your hip in place. And so when they're not strong, when they're not getting their own targeted workout, we can start to feel instability in the hips and tightness, which will definitely come into play if you're working on straddle or middle splits, which is why I love this exercise so much. Now, if you're starting to feel that these muscles are bunchy and they're gripping and they're working really hard, just make the movement smaller, make it quieter, turn down the volume on your effort. Maybe it's just this much movement. Look how tiny that is, but I can still feel my butt working and that's all I really care about. And then as long as this stays quiet, I can start to go further and lift that knee up higher. This is about how much I've got right now. Not super impressive, but very effective. Now, we can intensify this by holding that knee up and then lifting the foot up higher than the knee, coming to internal rotation. Ooh, that butt works. And then external rotation. So I'm really working these rotational muscles deep in the hip socket here. Make sure as you do this internal external rotation that this hip bone stays still. So I'm not allowing my hip to come forward and back to get the rotation, right? My pelvis stays completely still. And as you do this, also the knee is not going up and down. The knee stays still. So really it's just the rotation. All the work is happening in those butt muscles. So by repeating that exercise, doing it regularly, you can really start to strengthen the outside of your hips. Really good for long-term health in your hips, but also really good for training flexibility. Now, little pro tip about clams. This is how we almost always see clams in this position, right? With the knees a little bit bent. Now you can work your clams with your knees tucked much further in towards your chest. Like I said, there are six muscles here that we're targeting. We emphasize different muscles with the hips more bent or more extended. So in this position, feeling a little bit more on the outside here, gets very spicy very quickly. We can also work it with the hips fully extended. 
So like I'm standing up or like hanging from a trapeze bar, same thing. And then you'll feel it more like right in the downstairs butt, like where the butt and the thigh come together. We're getting these lower butt muscles here. Also super effective. So you can experiment with any configuration in between. And as always, don't forget to switch sides. So let's see how the right side does. Now, we have no reason to expect that the hips will be sa behave similarly. All you can do is set yourself up and see how it goes. So again, I'm taking this top hip bone, I'm lengthening it out. I'm using my waist and my back muscles to stabilize my torso. I'm bringing my top hip forward. I'm extending my top knee out. I'm gonna tube a toothpaste, squeeze these muscles and make sure that they're lengthened, they're relaxed, they're chilled. My feet are stacked, touching my butt. Hey, right butt, using it to lift the left knee. Yeah, or we see lift the right knee. The left knee is relaxed. We want as much as possible to not be pushing this bottom leg into the floor to lift the top leg. Really trying to just make those butt muscles work all by themselves. Because honestly, it's just not something that they do. And when we neglect them, when they don't get their own chance to shine and get strong and get energetic, then they're not going to be there for us when we need them in the different exercises that we do, or even just standing and walking around where these are incredibly important muscles for stabilizing our hip sockets. We can also try our internal external on this side, right? Lifting and lowering. See how that feels on the right side. Generally, there is a little bit of work happening in the bottom leg. We want to minimize it, but Whichever leg goes second usually gets tired faster because it had to work during the first leg. So what I like to do is switch every time I do this workout, switch which leg starts on top so that I can sort of counteract that effect. So hopefully you're really feeling this. Keep checking in with that hip flexor. Or is it relaxed? Is it relaxed? It's going to want to work, but we're trying to keep it from working. And again, we can try the knees pulled into the chest on this side. And, and just like with the last position, I'm bringing this top hip a little bit forward. I'm lengthening it out away from me. I'm relaxing the hip flexor, trying to feel the butt. Yep, this one's gonna be a little bit higher up on the butt, higher up muscles here. For me, this one is the hardest one. It gets tired very quickly. 20 reps of this, woo, I can feel it. And then we can also try it in this extended position. Again, lengthening that top butt out that direction, bringing it slightly forward. So the setup is the same no matter what angle your hips are at. And you'll definitely feel that they target slightly different areas. And if you think about it, we want our hips to be strong if we're in a deep squat, right? This would be a deep squat type hip position. This would be a standing hip position. So we want to be able to feel those muscles and engage them no matter what we're doing when our bodies are vertical. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this little adventurous exploration of your deep butt muscles. Love your butt, cherish your butt, touch your butt, strengthen your butt. It will serve you well. And if you are here because you are on an exploration to improve your straddle and middle splits, this exercise will be a wonderful companion to our other tutorials for straddle and middle splits, which you can find linked below. I love you very much. I love your butt also. And as always, many happy bendings.